subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Thank you to VServe Canada, Trillium Health Partners, and Ara Arts on the launch of the incredible initiative to highlight mental health and wellness. I know this pandemic has been tough for a lot of people, especially on their mental health. And the reality is that no one is immune to it. Everyone can sometimes experience burnout, depression, anxiety, and isolation. I hope that through this, this series, you can learn how to care and maintain your mental health. Your mental health is just as important as your physical health. Even though you may feel alone or helpless, I want you to know we have your back. If you need someone to talk to, please reach out to some of the amazing mental health and addiction agencies in your community. Thank you and God bless you. Mayor Bonnie Crombie here from the great city of Mississauga sending my best wishes to all the organizers and participants attending the COVID-19 Wellness Series hosted by VServe Canada and ARA Arts in collaboration with Trillium Health Partners. COVID-19 pandemic has brought so many uncertainties to our lives and has disrupted our way of living. It's okay to not feel okay during these uncertain times. It's important to stay active and stay connected mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. The COVID-19 Wellness Series is an opportunity for people to de-stress and take care of their mental health and well-being. By showing up at today's session, you are making your mental health a priority and you should be very proud of yourself. Brighter days are ahead. In the meantime, stay healthy and stay safe. Hello, my name is Nicole Lamont. I'm the Vice President of Philanthropy for Trillium Health Partners Foundation. It is my privilege to get to thank you for everything that you have done for Trillium. For those of you who may not be as familiar with Trillium, we are the hospital system that serves close to 2 million people across our Credit Valley Hospital site, Mississauga Hospital, and the Queensway Health Centre, right into West Toronto, through to Oakville, and north up to Milton and Georgetown. We have a very large catchment area and a very full offering of programs, including mental health, the largest in our region. We are so appreciative of your support of our COVID-19 wellness series. Your support is ensuring that patients and families have access to the mental health care supports that they need when they need it the most. We are just so appreciative. Thank you for your support. We also understand how much time and energy and dedication goes into organizing events like this. And I want to thank Anu Stravasta and your committee for everything that you have done. Thank you on behalf of the many people who will benefit from your time and your generosity. Have a wonderful event. Well, hello everybody uh, to, all of, uh, to all of you lovely people around the world. My name is Jake Deer. And it's great to have you join us as we do a very special series on COVID-19, the wellness series. This is uh, with VServe Canada in association with ERA Arts. They're presenting this very special series and very soon I'm going to have the presenting host come in and talk about what the series is. Um, is. You know, these are unprecedented times uh, as we go through this crazy global health crisis the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. It is so important during a regular time in our life and more importantly now that we all take care of our physical and probably more importantly, our mental health. And that is what this series aims to do. Right now is the presenting host, uh, Anushri Vastava, who's going to tell us a little bit about, about the series and then introduce our very, very special guest, who's going to take us through some very special uh, conversation on mental health. Anu Srivastava, welcome uh, to this COVID-19 wellness series that is put together by VServe Canada in association with ERA Arts. And you know about these great organizations 
Welcome to you and please tell us what this series is all about. Thank you so much, Jake. And uh, hello, everyone. Um, as you rightly said, Jake, uh, these indeed are unprecedented times. And who knew in this day and age that we would uh, not be living our normal lives, our lives would be disrupted, and uh, things would be so difficult for each and every one of us. And uh, I remember when the lockdown was done sometime in March, um, the thought was that everybody thought that this was going to go away in a matter of weeks, if not months. But mm -hmm. here we are six months later, and we are still struggling with trying to figure out what is this all thing about. Um, so we serve Canada, which is a not-for-profit organization, and Ara Arts, uh, which is a social wellness arts and culture organization, um, they initiated a project um, in collaboration with the Trillium Health Partners. And uh, what we decided to do was to come up with a COVID wellness series um, where we were going to come up with uh, coping strategies uh, related to COVID because the impact of COVID is so far and beyond our reach and there is no playbook for us to really go by. And so we really had to come up with an idea as to what can we do? Everyone says that I'm fine, I'm fine, but are we really fine? Um, this is what the thought was in my mind when we came up with the series and we collaborated with the Trillium Health Partners. And the idea was that we were going to get a range of um, medical doctors, the world renowned doctors who would really give their insight onto how we can deal with this pandemic and how it affects our mental health. And uh, this was on one side. And on the other hand, we wanted to come up with some um, alternative methods and how we can take care of ourselves, our self-care uh, through our traditional methods, uh, whether it was meditation, whether it was yoga or different things. And that's where I'd like to say that we came up with the series, uh, which was um, yoga and mental health. And uh, we are very, very proud to introduce as somebody who is not only an international celebrity, uh, but she is a former Miss India. She's a wellness expert. Uh, she's a yoga expert. She's a wellness enthusiast. Uh, so none other than Miss Pooja Batra. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Anu. Thank you so much. And so nice to see both Anu and Jake. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I met you two years ago. Thank you for having me back again. And yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's really a very um, difficult time that we've all been uh, sort of going through right now. It, it seems like the whole world has been railroaded of some sort. You know, we were going about doing a thing, and suddenly this you know curveball came at all of us. And uh, so, what came out most from this pandemic was how can we take care of ourselves, which was you know. Uh, of utmost importance and then take care of our loved ones you know because that's how small our world became yeah. so it was as important as taking care of yourself and your loved ones and uh, and that's the most important thing by the end of it it seems so puja can we start with our first question that how do you think yoga impacts mental health and wellness um uh, so i know so our nervous system is made of two com uh, two components it's a uh, parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system so sympathetic nervous system is fight or flight and parasympathetic nervous system is uh, you know rest and um, uh, you know you know breed so um so, so when we do yoga, what happens is that we relieve stress, we relieve inflammation. We know we get more tuned to our body. Uh, you know, uh, even our entire, you know, anxiety and everything goes away because we get to know what our body needs and where it needs more stretching, what is more tight. So we get more sort of aware of what our body 
is all about like you know do we, are we having a protruding tummy do we have a lower back ache we get more sort of uh, you know aware of our body so that's what yoga does and then there are other kriyas and techniques that yoga does which is uh, you know breathing uh, meditation so all this increases your awareness it increases your concentration and when when we say concentration that also helps you get away from uh, you know addictions um that you could have whether it's alcohol or it's any substance so it 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 gives you the strength to uh, you know have that mental uh, ability not to go towards an addictive uh, sort of you know uh, situation or uh, a personality so i think i attribute all of this to uh, yoga other than having self discipline you know yoga really calms your mind down and uh, helps you focus and uh, strengthen you mentally a lot more i guess yes yes, yes definitely that's yes. for sure yes um so yeah. my second question would be that how has yoga actually helped you personally during this pandemic because as we know that we all are struggling and we all are going through difficult times so how did it really help you you know anu i also went through a very up and down phase uh, through this pandemic so i would say that it motivated me you know doing yoga motivated me to you know get up in the morning and take care of my body because i said if if something happens to me how all my parents how am i going to you know take care of my parents or my loved ones if i am not in the capacity to take care of you know them or myself you know so i basically was motivated by doing yoga every day and it kind of disciplined me to you know get up in the morning and do it also it allocated a time a schedule in a day where i could devote let's say an hour and a half every day to myself doing a yoga routine or a breathing routine that was just time for myself which i think everybody needs so i think yoga motivates me every day and if i don't do it i feel like i'm lacking something i'd rather not eat a meal or two but if if i'm taken away from doing yoga i feel there's a miss you know i i i would rather do that than eat that's how i am right now <laughs> you have been doing yoga for a long long time so um i i know that you're very good but this was a time where when all that practice and all that yoga that you really did it came into full use right now yes it did it really did and i learned new kriyas i i mm -hmm. learned uh, you know jal neti uh, i learned more breathing techniques i i i learned more sort of uh, Uh, you know um, kriyas that would help my lungs uh, take in more oxygen which is of prime requirement right now in covid times you you have to make sure that you keep your lungs healthy and you and you're able to take 80% or 90% more oxygen than what normally you do when you breathe in you know so it did help me a lot Namaste and welcome back to Yoga with Pooja Batra in association with We Serve Canada COVID Wellness Series. I took up the practice of Jal Neti during this lockdown. This kriya is one of the six purification procedures or shat karmas also known as shat kriyas, the yogic system of body cleansing techniques. It is intended mainly to clean the air passageways in the head. and it is especially beneficial now in today's times as it washes out the covid genomes that are known to get stuck in the nostril hair of our nasal passage neti pot is a way to cleanse your sinuses and consequently keep the respiratory tract clear of dirt and toxins the sinus cavities get clogged with the impurities which cause inflammation infections and other respiratory disorders We require distilled lukewarm water, non-iodized salt, a neti pot and a small towel. It's very important that the water is germ-free and not tap water. So if you're planning to use tap water, make sure you boil the water first to kill all the germs and then use the water when the water is of lukewarm temperature. 
cold water and hot water is not to be used as it may rupture the nasal mucosa. This is what we need. This is a neti pot, which is readily available in any store or online. And another kind of neti pot is uh, this. Looks like this, it's of plastic. Uh, this is of copper. You need a small uh, towel or hanky or even napkins would do. So here's what you do. Before you start, you want to check your nasal flow. So you put your uh, hand under your nose and you breathe out. And that way you determine which nostril throws out most air. So for me, it's the left. So I'm gonna start my Jal Neti from the left and you can decide the same with your uh, nostril. The other technique that I do is I do Kapal Bhati, which is I close one nostril like this and I breathe out from the other nostril 10 times. And I'll do the same from the other nostril. And I'll breathe out from both the nostrils. Now I can do Jal Neti sitting or even standing. You can perform the Neti while you're seated. So when you're sitting, you need a big bowl with a deep bottom or a tray so that you don't wet your clothes. And uh, you lean forward, tilt your head, take the nozzle off the Neti pot and put it in your nostril. Take it deep inside, tilt your head, raise your elbows so that your entire uh, procedure is on an incline so that the water uh, comes out easy and that's one way of doing the neti. You can also stand in front of your wash basin or your sink. I prefer to do it outside and I'll show you how. So to stand and do it, this is how you do it. You bend your knees, you tilt your body forward, you tilt your head at an incline, you put the spout of the neti pot in your nose, you breathe through the mouth, not through the nose. So when you put it inside, you make sure your elbows are at an angle. This is when you need the towel. The water will keep coming out when you do this, so don't get hassled because it's cleaning the passage. And likewise, you repeat it from the other nostril. Similarly, bend forward, body, body torso forward. You tilt your head, you put the spout in your other nostril, open your mouth. It is a great technique to keep your ears, eyes and nose away from infections. It has a cooling effect on the brain by drawing out excessive heat and even relieves you from migraine, seasonal allergies, sinusitis and bronchitis as it keeps the nostrils clear and you don't have to breathe from your mouth. Thank you so much for watching my show Yoga with Pooja Batra. And I will see you again with more videos for the COVID wellness series for We Serve Canada. Take care and be safe. Yeah, I think, you know, that it's interesting you talk about breathing and, and, and lungs being so important for that and getting that fresh air because generally, and I don't have the stats on this, Pooja, but we only use, I think, probably less than 10, 20% of our lungs. So you need to do those breathing exercises to exercise, exercise your lungs. And you raised a very interesting point where, uh, you said it's important that for me to take care of my family and my parents and so on, I need to take care of myself. And the analogy I'll use is, you know, when we're on a plane and when the security uh, video or, or the attendant talks about, you know, you put your mask on first and then you put your mask on on your, on your you know, uh, seniors or your young kids. 
the reason you put it on yeah. first is because you need to be healthy first to take care of your your kids right and and i think yeah. you raise a very good point let me let me ask you um <clears throat> you talked about breathing um how does breathing help you focus what are maybe you could um, even so go I, through some of the three three breathing exercises or something just so our our uh, folks that are watching can also get a you know get to understand that yeah so what it does is like uh, basically it clears the pathways to the brain so ancient yogis say that in order to attain moksha uh, or the samadhi where you're uh, you know connecting to the higher self your passages your body has to be cleaned that's why um, they talk about socha cleanliness and they talk about even socha of your nostrils which is which is jal neti which is a kriya then there are six different kind of procedures that cleanses your body uh, people uh, you know put a thread inside and uh, you know cleanse uh, you know till their intestines they uh, put the you know uh, rope inside and then they take it out that's one cleansing which i have i don't know when i learn it a lot of people put water in and then you know purge the water out that's also cleansing so there are six uh, different procedures and one of the procedure is kapal bhati which is basically breathing out so you have to constantly keep breathing out so what happens is your passageway uh, for your lungs and everything gets cleaned out which could have been blocked from mucus or uh, impurities or i don't know pollution or the kind of food we are eating the kind of air we are breathing even the aerosols that are in the air the planes flying you know there's so much uh, there's so much pollution in the world today apart from you know food and what we eat air water everything is kind of polluted so they are saying to attain moksha your body has to be completely clean for for you to uh, immediately get that channel namaskar and welcome to my covid wellness workshops in association with we serve canada ara arts and trillium health partners i'm going to be talking about kapal bhati which is also called breath of fire it is an important shat karma one of the six body purification techniques in hatha yoga the word kapal bhati is made up of two sanskrit words kapala meaning skull and bhati meaning shining it is intended mainly for cleaning the sinuses this is how we do it to do kapal bhati please sit in a meditative pose or a comfortable pose you can either sit on your yoga mat uh, on your sofa on your chair or even on your bed sit comfortably relax take a deep breath in exhale Notice that I'm inhaling and exhaling from my nose. There should be no stress. Connect with your breath. Now Kapal Bhati is passive inhalation and very excessive or forceful exhalation. So you breathe in through your nostrils. Expand your chest. and exhale forcefully contracting your abdominal muscles so i'll show you how Yeah, so thirty times is one round, and your aim should be to do three rounds. Please do try this. The breathing technique involves active exhalation and passive inhalation. During inhalation, the stomach sinks in, and vice versa during exhaling. This stomach movement is therefore beneficial for the muscles around it, including that of the liver and pancreas. the blood flow to these areas also increases it aids digestion and removal of acidity and flatulence related problems some benefits of kapal bhati are it purifies the frontal air sinuses uh, it helps to overcome cough disorders 
It is useful in treating cold, sinusitis, asthma, and uh, it rejuvenates the whole body and keeps the face young and vibrant. It balances and strengthens the nervous system and it tones up uh, the digestive system as well. So uh, when, you, when you ask me uh, do some breathing, I can talk about my number one breathing that uh, I go to every time when I, I get anxious or I'm stressed which is another thing that yoga uh, does. It relieves you from stress, from inflammation and anxiety. So I do Anulom Vilom, uh, which is uh, you know, a breathing technique where you basically breathe in from one nostril while the other nostril is closed. And then alternatively, you breathe from the other, breathe in and out from uh, both the nostrils. You know? So that's Anulom mm -hmm. Vilom. You generally, start from your, you generally start breathing in from your left nostril when your right nostril is closed, you breathe in hard, you hold the breath, and then you let it go uh, from the right nostril. And then after you've let it go, then you breathe in again from the right, you hold the breath and you let it go from the left. And you keep doing this Kriya uh, for a good, for a starters can do it anything from five minutes to 10 minutes. And you know, if you want to go on, you can keep going on for half an hour, you know? Wow. So the 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 yeah so the connection with this breathing and concentration is that when you're breathing in from the left nostril it kind of goes to your right brain so you're using the opposite brain from the opposite nostril which like you said rightly said that most people don't even use uh, you know 6% uh, of their brain so this kind of opens up and it cleans uh, the passage for you to be able to use both the sides of the brain and increase your capacity to concentrate uh, to you know have um, i don't know to be a more sort of um, intelligent human being namaskar welcome to my covid wellness workshops today i talk about breath control anulom vilom it is a specific type of controlled breathing mainly pranayam in the practice of yoga it involves holding one nostril while inhaling and then holding the other nostril closed while exhaling. The process is then reversed and repeated. Alternate breathing is said to have many physical and psychological benefits, including reduction and improved breathing, obviously, and circulation in the brain. It is also known to reduce anxiety and improve cognition. Let me show you how. To practice Anulom Vilom, I would recommend you go to a nice, a comforting place in your house or a quiet area or a zone. Uh, you sit in a comfortable position. I will. I sit in lotus position as I am sitting, legs folded, and uh, your back has to be straight. Your neck has to be straight. You want to breathe five normal breaths to center your body. Feel your breath inside your body. Be one with your breath. And now to start the practice of Anulom Vilom, we are going to use the right hand where we will bend the index finger and the middle finger towards the palm. And we will be using the right thumb and the ring finger. This is how we do it. We begin by putting the right thumb on the right nostril. We always start with the left nostril. We breathe in from the left nostril. Hold the breath. Release from the right. Now breathe in from the right. You 
can also do this practice five minutes to about 30 minutes the longer you do the more benefits you have but you can start obviously with five minutes try at least uh, finishing five minutes of anulom vilom and uh, you will see the benefits right away thank you and i'm gonna ask uh, anu's gonna ask the next question but before she does um do you have to be seated in a certain position or a place to do this and the reason i'm asking puja is because when i go for my walk my wife and i go for a walk um early in the morning it's nice and crisp in canada especially in the in the winter and even in the summer it's very nice so we'll do that and as we were walking we one of our wonderful polish neighbors said i've noticed you guys do this what is all that and then so i had to explain to them <laughs> but now, now i can make it to, now you can explain yeah <laughs> i can explain to it better than uh, than before but and thank you very much for that that is very very important and it's interesting you say that it's it's good for our internals and our lungs but it's very good and important for our brain to be equally clean and fresh and get that Bob, blood circulation and air circulation very yeah. very important yeah yeah, I know. yeah. yeah. Uh, so puja you have given so many good insights and um, i'm thinking like you know if all of us even if we do some of it um it would be just so good for our bodies so what do you think is the best way to incorporate yoga um as part of your daily routine and uh, what do you what is your favorite uh, yoga pose like if you can maybe show that and of course uh, tell us uh, how we can incorporate sure anu i mean um, i have uh, before i go to that i wanted to uh, say that th this was a very nice question he asked that can can you sit and do it can, how can you you can actually sit and do all these breathing exercises you could be seated in a chair in a sofa or you could be seated on a yoga mat now there's this uh, other breathing technique which i learned from tony robbins when i was doing his workshop um it's called bhastrika and suddenly i'm sitting in staple center in los angeles with uh, i don't know people from all over the world and there's this american guru called to tony robbins who's talking about an indian old ancient form of breathing called bhastrika and he made the entire audience of some 3000 people do this so this is what he did one exercise i'll show you so he said everybody raise your uh, uh, you know hands up and uh, make a fist like this so we would raise and then bring it down and when you bring it down you breathe out oh yes yeah. <laughs> He made the entire 3,000 people do this uh, 90 times, set of 30, 30 each. So 30 times we do this and fast. And then again, we give a, a little gap and then again, 30 times. So it's like uh, when I'll show you the video and you can see it. So this is Bhastrika, which I really uh, enjoy. And this, you could do it before an examination. You can do it, uh, you know, before you're entering a very strong meeting or, you know, an interview, in an audition. It just kind of gives you clarity. I don't know what it does. It just, I'm telling you, it just opens your brain. So, you know, these things are, they work. <laughs> and there is a reason why our ancient yogis used to do it and they were so connected to God. So, Pooja, I just remembered one thing that you had also mentioned talking about, uh, these exercises you had mentioned about uh, brain uh, yoga what is all that yes. about because that has something similar as well yes that does the same thing that i was talking about the you know the when you pull so you're basically uh, your uh, left uh, ear lobe uh, from the outside and obviously yeah. you're not wearing earrings then and you're pulling it from your uh, right so opposites will pull so you're basically holding like this and you're in squat position so you're right. squatting yeah. down on so down you breathe out and when you come up you breathe in so that's super brain yoga and it has the same effect like anulom vilom in the different uh, uh, both the brain hemispheres you know when and i was a kid um, you call it uttang bathak right or dand bathak Exactly, dand bethak. <laughs> then you said it. It's dand bethak. वो भी कान पकड़ के जैसे हमारे teachers उनको punishment देते थे ना. So we didn't know yes. that they're actually helping us. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Pooja. We'll go back uh, to the question. 
Yeah. What is the going best back, way to incorporate going, yoga? I think the best way, Anu, is to just get up in the morning and, you know, after your tummy is clean and it's empty, you know, just dedicate anything from half an hour to 45 minutes uh, to yourself. Go meditate or breathe. And if you want to stretch, you know, start get a good uh, teacher a eh? you need to have a good teacher from whom you can learn uh, you know yoga because then it's very difficult to start the practice yourself so um so i would recommend uh, you know get a good teacher and if you don't have a teacher take up just surya namaskar initially as beginners you know learn how to correctly do surya namaskar and try doing 10 to 12 Surya Namaskars every day. And that is my go-to uh, yoga uh, po po pose that I would if I'm in a rush or if my mind is not clear, I just start with the Surya Namaskar. Okay, okay, that, that's wonderful. So, and so I'm assuming that is your favorite yoga pose, that's your go-to yoga pose for any and everything. I, it, it is for any and then I keep variating after I've done one I'll stretch I'll do a I'll get into a warrior pose uh, after I've done the you know six I will uh, get into a pigeon pose I'll do inversions so I can keep variating but a basic Surya Namaskar is just amazing so I'm sure you're going to show your video of doing the full Surya Namaskar and people I will can show actually you <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I'll definitely uh, show you that. Namaskar and welcome to my COVID wellness workshops with We Serve Canada, Ara Arts and Trillium Health Partners. If you find very little time to spare for a daily workout regime, but you want to stay fit, there is nothing better than Surya Namaskar. As the name suggests, it means sun salutations. Surya Namaskar is an ancient practice of paying respect and expressing gratitude to the sun that is the prime reason for having life on earth. It is a dynamic sequence of 12 postures repeated to make a set of 24 postures. Now five to 10 sets are performed at a time to promote biological changes. Regular practice of Surya Namaskar is necessary to enhance the solar plex chakra which is the Manipura, and which influences your creativity and intuitive abilities. Let me show you how to do the sequence. Before you begin Surya Namaskar, make sure you're warmed up. You could do 20 to 30 jumping jacks, or you could do spot running, do some stretching. And when you're ready, come on the edge of your mat, your feet together, inhale, Exhale, center your breathing. Inhale, in Pranamasan or Anjali Mudra, hands by your chest, heart center. Exhale, inhale, hands up, Anubit Asan. Backward bend. Exhale, hands touch the floor. Padhastasan. Now your hands and feet are in one line. Bend your head and try to touch your forehead with your knee. From here, I'll put my right foot back in Ashvasanchalan Asan. I can bend backwards. For beginners, they can put their knee on the mat. You don't have to bend that back for beginners. You could stay like this. And from here, I go into Chaturanga Dandasan or a plank. Again, for beginners, you can bend your knee. From here, I will go into Ashtanga Namaskara, put my knees on the mat, my chest on the mat, and my chin on the mat. Beginners can put their tummy on the mat. 
After I will go into Bhujangasana. From Bhujangasana, I will go into Downward Dog or Adha Mukha Shavasana. Look at your navel. Now bring your right foot forward. Ashvasan Chalanasan. You can put your left knee on the mat or not. Padasthasan. So from Padasthasan, Anubitasan, inhale, exhale, Pranamasan. So by its regular practice, blood circulation is intensified and the speed of metabolism increases, which makes all the organs of the body strong and functional. It makes all vertebrae of the spine flexible and healthy, and it increases memory and concentration. So that actually brings me to the last question, which is more so that I know you said that uh, the best way to get motivated and uh, start yoga in a routine is get up early in the morning and take out half an hour or 45 minutes of your time. But in our busy lives, people are so caught up with so many things that they're doing. And for somebody who is just starting out, maybe that half an hour is too onerous for them so let's say if somebody we want to motivate somebody into starting doing yoga uh, let's say if they have just 15 minutes of their time what would you recommend that in those 15 minutes what are the three things that they absolutely must do and that they can start on their uh, yoga regime I think uh, they can start with, uh, you know, the basic asanas, which is uh, I, which is my favorite asana called Tad Asana, which is mountain pose. So throughout the day, you're standing with your hands down, you know, all the blood circulation and everything is kind of going down. Tad Asana basically means your feet together and you basically align your body in such a way that your weight is neither in front nor at the back your you know your your posture is completely correct and you raise your arms up and you hold this okay. for 60 seconds okay just so yeah just so that that you reverse the blood flow and uh, that is why inversions are so so important uh, you know in yoga because uh, all throughout the day we are standing down and there is no blood circulation coming to our face our head and our shoulders that's why inversions are so good because a lot of people who have shoulder pain neck pain uh, you know and and i am a little vain As somebody told me you want to look like this for the rest of your life start doing headstands and handstands and that was the day <laughs> 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 I just started my
<laughs> you do it you beautifully. Do it. I have seen I have seen some of your videos of the headstand puja. They are just amazing, but they are too difficult for me. I'm telling you, they, I can just do namaste they right are now. Not, <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not difficult. And for people who don't want to get up on uh, get on the BP medicines, on the high blood pressure, low blood blood pressure medicines, that this is a hundred percent. Uh, show a short thing that you do a, a sheer shasan headstand which is the king of asans and you'll never never be taking a bp medicine oh. wow so and it's that not is... difficult at all you it's not difficult and i guarantee you anu if you do a class with me you'll be starting a headstand by a wall that sounds amazing so tell me so you do do classes i mean now we are living in a global world so it really doesn't matter whether you are in India or we are in Canada or it doesn't matter. So do you have a, a, like you have classes that you teach actually yoga? No, I, I don't have classes, but I've had, uh, you know, personal people reach out to me where I've done a one on one like Zoom. And uh, I did your uh, summit where I taught, uh, you know, close yes. to 200 people in Toronto two years ago. And uh, yes. And, you know, with my LA friends, uh, we are planning, we were planning before uh, the COVID happened, uh, yoga retreats in the blue zones, uh, which is where all the people in these blue zones live beyond 100 years. There are five zones like this in the world. Um, so we were planning uh, yoga retreats in these zones centenarians you know uh, they are in japan they are in costa rica they are in some parts in brazil so that and then the covid happened so this gotten pushed but that's going to be uh, you know what i'll be doing probably when the world is clear of this virus so is there a that uh, blue zone somewhere in north america north america uh no we have it in costa rica we definitely have it in japan and we have okay. it in brazil and mm -hmm. um there are two other places but i have to uh, find out what those places are exactly but the, here it's pretty amazing i know that the people uh, on an average live a hundred and above in today's time right. no i was just saying that because of covid and all that's happened i think a lot of things are going to change people's mindsets are, are going to change and i think uh, some of the things that we would take so lightly uh, previously it's not going to um, happen that much anymore i think people are going to be a lot more serious about their mental health their physical health their spiritual health and any and everything that is going to be possible. I think they are going to reach out to that. And, uh, you know, you are doing such a wonderful um, work uh, by uh, teaching the yogic, um, you know, uh, the, the things that are in our scriptures, the things that we have been doing for thousands and thousands of years. And uh, this is a time that we can actually catch them uh, you know, imbibe them, uh, you know, use them and really look after ourselves and our health uh, with the with the wonderful yoga practices that, uh, you know, that are available to all of us. So I'd like to say thank you so much, Pooja, for such an insightful conversation and also motivating a lot of us in trying to do yoga on a regular basis uh, keeping our minds clutter free, keeping our uh, minds healthy and taking care of ourselves. And like I said before, taking care of uh, self-care, which is very, very important. And I think the self-care really starts with yoga. And I cannot thank you enough for all that that you do for all of us and for everyone. And thank you so much. Thanks, Pooja. Thank you, Anu. And thank you for taking my messages and my yoga videos uh, across in Canada and to your sort of reach, which is important because, you know, I mean, uh, the more people know, the better uh, it is. And even if it helps one person, I believe in it that, you know, it's it's worth it. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Def I just wanted to, before, <laughs> before you do the wrap up comments, um, yep. I'd like to thank our moderator, Jake Deer, 
uh, who is uh, very, very, very active uh, in our community. And um, uh, I'd like to also mention that uh, the Trillium Health Partners, we are collaborating with Trillium Health Partners and uh, Jake Deer is a board member there as well. I mean, not to mention he is um, engaged in many, many boards and many, many community organizations. Uh, but, you know, thank you for all the work that you are doing and participating in the COVID wellness series. Thank you, Jake. It was a very engaging conversation. And, you know, my role on the Trillium Health Partners Foundation, especially now, you know, when we look at all that's going on around the world with this COVID-19 crisis, um, we have to salute our frontline healthcare workers. You know, Pooja, you spoke about your family and, and uh, their doctors and, and how they have had They've unfortunately, because of the patients and so on, they've contracted, uh, you know, they've uh, uh, gotten COVID-19 and they are going through that and the effects, the post effects of COVID-19 and so on. Um, it's so important that we thank our frontline healthcare workers around the world, globally, for all around that they're the doing. World, yeah. I mean, we can just say thank, we can just say sit here and just, you know, that's the least we can do is uh, encourage them and, and, you know, give, you know, honor to them for doing the world a service, you know, because they actually have. Yeah, absolutely. And Anu, um, it's very hard to say no to Anu because whatever she comes up with an initiative, she does it all so perfectly for our community. And so it's hard to say no to her. Anu, thank you very much for being a part of today's conversation. Folks, this was VSERV Canada in association with ERA Arts presenting COVID-19 wellness series today was with our wonderful celebrity and guest expert, um, Pooja Batra. And we'll have a bunch of these series as Anu said earlier with various doctors talking about mental health. Um, and wanna give a special shout out to Yudhvir Jaswal, who's the uh, group editor, the founder of Y Media to him. Uh, to Preet Jaswal and to the entire Y Media team with Gurpreet and Angad and, and there's a long list. Just want to thank everybody at Y Media for helping us uh, facilitate this engaging conversation. Uh, Anu talked about Trillium. Trillium Health Partners and the Trillium Health Partners Foundation is really um, an incredible regional hospital where they provide world-class healthcare right in your home and in home, in this case, it, it's Ontario, Canada. Uh, they have three sites, the Mississauga site, the uh, Credit Valley site, and then the uh, Toronto, uh, the Queensway site. If you would like to give um, to Frontline Healthcare, you can do so, of course, in your respective communities. But if you'd like to give to Trillium, please log on to trilliumgiving.ca. And you can see that at the bottom of your screen, trilliumgiving.ca. Again, thank you for this engaging conversation. Thank you to Pooja Patra. Thank you to my dear friend, Anu Vastava. Please, folks, do stick around. There'll be lots of stuff on this very special series as we go through this crazy global health crisis, COVID-19. The wellness series continues. Take care of yourselves and those around you. God bless you. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.